good morning students today we are going to have our second video lesson of social studies class 5 we will continue chapter number 1 maps grid lines we will cover the information given on page number 2 and 3 of your book students having old print will find this information on page number 6 and 7 the time duration of today's lesson is 35 minutes and the resources required are smart social studies book 5 notebook and pencils by the end of this lesson you should be able to explain the effects of latitude on different places on the earth explain lines of longitude explore prime meridian understand the concept of international date line and explain the term time zone before we start the lesson let's recall a few basic facts we discussed in our last lesson what is equator yes equator is an imaginary line that divides the earth into northern and southern hemispheres what are latitudes latitudes are imaginary lines running from east to west what angle and direction is arctic circle located it is located approximately 66.5 degrees north of the equator what angle and direction is antarctic circle located It is located approximately 66.5 degrees south of the equator. What angle and direction is the Tropic of Cancer located? It is located at approximately 23.5 degrees north. What angle and direction is the Tropic of Capricorn located? It is located at approximately 23.5 degrees south. As we already know, what are the lines of latitude? Let's discuss the effects of latitude. Latitude plays a major role in the weather and climate around the world, affecting the winds, duration of the daylight in polar regions and other physical characteristics. temperature is one of the major effects of latitude as places with latitudes farther away from the equator receive less sunlight and are much cooler as a result you can see in this image these are the lines of latitude this is equator this is tropic of cancer this is arctic circle this is tropic of capricorn and this is antarctic circle now the sunlight reaches to these areas directly and these areas receive indirect sunlight so places near the equator are hotter as compared to the places which are farther away from the equator the climate of a region can be determined by its position on the latitude the axis of the earth is tilted so places on latitudes receive varied amount of sunlight with the changing of seasons from april to september the northern hemisphere receives more sunlight because it is tilted towards the sun The southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun from October to March. That's why the northern hemisphere has summer at the same time the southern hemisphere has winter and vice versa. So students, I hope you have understood the effects of latitude now. Now let's discuss what are longitudes. the vertical lines that run up and down on the map are the lines of longitude you can say from north to south 
up and down or north to south these are the lines of longitudes they are also called meridians they are also called north ends they are not parallel you can see these lines are not parallel like the lines of latitude they meet at one point in north and in south so in north and south poles these lines meet they are not parallel what is prime meridian prime meridian is a line of longitude that divides the earth into eastern and western hemispheres you see this is the line of prime meridian it divides the earth into eastern hemisphere this is all eastern hemisphere and this is all western hemisphere so what is prime meridian a line an imaginary line that divides the earth into eastern and western hemispheres it is at 0 degree longitude prime meridian is at 0 degree longitude and it is also called greenwich meridian now as you know the equator and the prime meridian let's see what is the difference between equator and prime meridian yes equator divides the earth into northern and southern hemisphere this is northern hemisphere and this is southern hemisphere so equator divides the earth into northern and southern hemispheres however prime meridian divides the earth into eastern and western hemisphere this is eastern hemisphere and this is western hemisphere so what we conclude is the lines of latitude and longitude make up the grid system of the earth these are the lines of latitude and these are the lines of longitude together both these lines make up the earth's grid and we will discuss in detail in the next lesson about the grid lines and the grid references grid lines we have already discussed but the grid references we will be discussing in our next lesson so students what is international date line International date line is located halfway around the world from the prime meridian 0 degree longitude or about 180 degree east or west of Greenwich London UK it is not a straight line now let's watch a video to understand the concept of time zone and international date line Now the first thing that you need to know is that a time zone is a region or an area that observes the same time throughout. So no matter how north or south you are in a time zone, you are going to experience the same time. And it's not until you cross over another line of longitude where a new time zone begins. Let's start talking about that right now. Now here I have a picture of the earth and this is a bird's eye view so imagine you're floating in space above the earth and you're looking straight down at the north pole. We have our two major longitude lines. We have our prime meridian located at 0 degrees. Remember the prime meridian is the starting point of all longitude, which is why it's at 0. And then we have our international date line which is at 180 degrees. Okay, the reason why it's at 180 degrees is because this angle here is 180 degrees as you may remember from math. So the international date line is located there. This is the end point. There is no higher degree number after 180. As we learned in our last lesson, the prime meridian is going to divide the earth into two hemispheres. The western hemisphere here on the left and then the eastern hemisphere here on the right. And that's going to be important when trying to figure out how much time or what time is being observed in a time zone or how to calculate the differences amongst time zones. that we'll get to later. If we take a look, as we said before, longitude lines 
determine the time zones on Earth. So here are all of our longitude lines all intersecting at the North Pole as longitude lines do. And don't forget they intersect at the South Pole. So each wedge here represents one time zone. Now each time zone is actually 15 degrees of longitude wide. Here in the Western Hemisphere, we'll notice that all of our degrees is, are labeled with W, so we can note that we're in the Western Hemisphere. And then again, in the Eastern Hemisphere, we have our 15 degrees multiples, all labeled East for the Eastern Hemisphere. Now the reason why a time zone is worth 15 degrees of longitudinal distance is because what scientists did was that they took the total angular measurement of Earth which is 360 degrees because a sphere, the shape of the Earth, is 360 degrees. And they took the amount of time it took the Earth to rotate or to spin one complete time. So that takes about 24 hours. So it takes the Earth 24 hours to make one complete spin. So they took the angular measurement 360 degrees, divided it by 24 hours, and what they realized and calculated was that the Earth rotates 15 degrees an hour. So each hour is worth 15 degrees of longitude. So this is worth one hour of time, this is worth one hour of time, and every single wedge on this picture is worth one hour of time. What you have to remember is you have to remember when you need to add hours and when you need to subtract hours and how many hours you need to add or subtract. So this is how we go about it. You can remember the simple little rhyme scheme and it'll help you remember what to do when traveling west or east and what to do with time. Now if you go west or if you travel west, time gets less. So for every 15 degrees that you move westward, you are going to lose an hour of time. So from the prime meridian to 15 degrees west, I lose one hour of time. If I travel to 30, well, that's two sets of 15, so I lose two hours of time. And if I go from 0 to 45, that's three sets of 15, so I lose three hours of time. Because remember, 15 degrees is worth one hour. So every 15 degrees I travel westward, I lose an hour of time. Now, the opposite happens for the east. As you go east, time increase. So for every 15 degrees east you travel, you add an hour. So from the prime meridian to 15 degrees east, I add one hour here. And then again, when I go 30, as we said before, 30 is two sets of 15. That's going to give me two hours. As I go to 45, that's three sets of 15. That gives me three hours. And I'm going to add an hour for every longitude line worth 15 degrees until I get to the international date line. The prime meridian is usually our reference. So that's, we usually think, about at, think of that as zero hours because that's our starting point, so you can't be any hours different. And your international date line is usually about 12 hours different, okay? So that's how the direction and time breaks down. Remember, as you go west, time gets less. As you go east, time increase. So let's see how this works. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eliminate these green and purple boxes just so it doesn't get too visually busy for us. So let's say in this time zone here between 0 to 15 degrees, we have a time of 12 noon. So every city, town, country in this wedge here from the North Pole all the way down to the South is observing 12 o'clock noon. We have to figure out what the time is going to be as we move westward. Again, remember, west is less and every 15 degrees is one hour. This area is observing 12 noon. So that means once I hit 15, I've reached a brand new time zone. And since I've gone west, the time is going to get less. So I've gone 15 degrees, which is worth one hour, and I'm going to subtract one hour. So this time zone is going to be at 11 a.m. If I continue to travel westward, I get the 30 degrees. Remember, that's two 15 degree lines away. So that's going to subtract two hours from our original starting point. So this time zone will be experiencing 10 a.m. And as I get to 45, that means I'm three sets of 15 degrees away. So that means I'm going to subtract three hours from my starting time of noon, and that's gonna give me a time of 9 a.m. And as we go, every time zone, we subtract one more hour. That's what happens, or that's how we determine time as we go west. Now, as we go east, time increase. If I start here 
in this zone and I move over to the next time zone, I'm going to add an hour. This time here would be 1 p.m. And then as I move to this time zone here, my time would be 2 p.m. Every 15 degrees that I move over, I keep adding a brand new hour. And as we move around, we'll see that we eventually will get to midnight at the international date line. That's how our time zones are broken down, and that's how you can figure out whether you have to subtract and how much you have to subtract, or whether you have to add and how much you have to add time when you're figuring it out. Now, last point I want to make is this. What you'll notice is that the international date line is located here at 180 degrees. The international date line, again, is the main starting point of the new day. So as you can tell, this time zone here has reached midnight. So we're at midnight at the international date line. So midnight starts the brand new day. Here at the international date line, we can start the brand new day, let's say Monday. So we're at midnight Monday morning. But as we move back through this time zone, this time zone is still experiencing 11 p.m. Sunday night and then 10 p.m. Sunday night in this time zone, 9 p.m. Sunday night in this time zone down at noon on Sunday at near the prime meridian, and even all the way back here through the U.S., we're still at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Sunday morning. You always have to remember that the international date line is the starting point of the brand new day, and every single time zone behind it is still in the previous day. So I think the concept of time zones and international dateline is quite clear after watching this video. Now let's review what we have learned today. What are the effects of latitude on different places on the earth? What are the lines of longitude? What is prime meridian? What is international dateline? What are time zones? Check your answers. What are the effects of latitude on different places on the earth? Latitude plays a major role in the weather and climate around the world, affecting the winds, duration of daylight in polar regions, and other physical characteristics. What are the lines of longitude? The vertical lines that run up and down on the map are the lines of longitude. What is prime meridian? Prime meridian is the line of longitude that divides the earth into eastern and western hemispheres. What is international date line? It is located halfway around the world from the prime meridian, zero degree longitude or about 180 degree east or west of Greenwich, London, UK. The date advances one day when crossing the line east to west and goes back one day when the movement is in the opposite direction. What are time zones? A region that observes the same time is known as the time zone. Now let's practice. Task number one is to read page number two and three of your book Students having old print will find this information on page number 6 and 7. Task number 2. Complete question number 2, part 3 from page number 5 in your notebooks. Students having old print will find this question on page number 9. Your task number 3 is to complete question number 3 on page number 6 of your book. Students having old print will find this information on page number 10. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Have a good day.